Hello, everybody. How you doing? All right. Get to up a little bit. How you doing? Good. Good. All right. It's Saturday. We're out here. You know, we could be anywhere in the world, but we decided to be here today, and that's a good thing. Another thing is we're alive. We're, we're above the ground, which yes. is always awesome. And the way my pastor always says it is if you take the time to do one activity, I want everybody to do an activity with me. I want you to do this. Do one more time. If you can do that, that means you're still alive. So you should be able to give yourself a hand for that. Yes. Give yourself a hand. <laughs> so my name is Ray John Lewis. Um, who am I? I am really nobody in the grand scheme of things, to be honest with you. But I'm here with you today, and I'm glad to be here. I, um, I'm a teacher. I teach fifth grade at Stiles Elementary School. Um, I am the program director of a mentoring organization called the Distinguished Gentlemen's Club Mentoring Program. We work with young men from third through twelfth grade, and uh, we try to teach them life skills, um, etiquette. But most importantly, we try to get them to one, learn the, the benefits of being a part of a brotherhood of positive young men. We also try to teach them the importance of seeking um, positive career um, opportunities, as well as preparing them for college and career. So those are things that we do with our young men, um, and something I really enjoy doing my free time. It is a, a purely volunteer position, so everything I do with them is on a volunteer basis. I get paid for none of it. But I love it because I love you guys. I love you guys being the future. I love the, the opportunity that we have to um, to to affect the future in a positive way. So my, I want to do a couple things before I get started. My son right here drinking the orange, drinking soda. That's my son, and that's my daughter, um, <laughs> Natasha. They came with me this morning it's because I want to, I wanted them to be able to see things like this happen. And I'm excited that you guys are here because, like I said, you could have been anywhere. All right, so what I'm pretty much going to be doing today is I'll be serving until our official master of ceremonies, Mr. Raphael James of Channel 5 News gets here. I'll be serving as a de facto um, master of ceremonies. Thank so you. I guess I can go ahead and get, I can talk a little about myself to fill time before I go to the next guest. Is that cool? Please. Clara? Yeah. Cool. All right, um, so let me tell you a little, about, a little bit about me. I am from North Charleston, South Carolina. North Charleston, if you don't know where it is, is right across the bridge from here. Everybody talks about historical Charleston, right? Charleston's been what? Most beautiful city in the world the last two years straight. I think it's top three in the, in the world and, and number one in the country two years straight, right? Well, I'm from North Charleston, the part that was the number seven um, ranked city of crime per capita in the country. That's where I'm from. I went to North Charleston High School, all right? If you don't know what North Charleston High School is, from North Charleston High School in the year 2001. Now, funny story, I actually was supposed to graduate in 2000. What I just say, I was a class of 2001. I'll talk about that in a second. All right, I'm a graduate of, um, of Trinity Technical College. I got my associate's degree. I graduated from College of Charleston. I have my bachelor's degree. I'm a veteran. I was in the Army for six and a half years. I've seen the world. I've lived in, I've lived in Middle Eastern countries. But I also had five beautiful children whom I love. And I'm married to the woman of my dreams, my wife, Latoya. Now, how did I get from living in a trailer park in North Charleston to being a teacher with an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree? Well, I'll tell you, there's a whole lot of mistakes along the way. I'll tell you, it was not a perfect road. I'll tell you, it was never easy. I'll tell, I can tell you that there were times that I went without food. I can tell you there's times where I took that light switch and it didn't turn on. I can tell you that. And I can tell you that without it being like a lie for me to rah-rah and make you guys feel like anything's possible. But no, I'm telling you that because I lived it. I can tell you that there were times where I ate ramen noodles every single day because it's all I could afford while I was in the military. I can tell you that because I lived that thing. I know that thing, right? So let's go back to the story what I was telling you about. When I talked to year, I was always the type of guy I wanted to make people proud. I always wanted to make people proud, especially my grandparents. Um, when I was really young, I moved into my grandparents' house um, to live with my grandparents for a few years. Um, I didn't stay with them very long, but when I was there, I learned a lot of very, very valuable um, pieces of information. When I was seven years old, the Nintendo, the first Nintendo came out. Super Mario Brothers 1. Do you remember that game? Yeah. <laughs> Y'all know the game. All right, it came out that summer. And I told my granddad, I said, Granddad, I really want, I really want this Nintendo. I really want this Nintendo, Granddad. Please, give me this Nintendo. He said, okay, you want the Nintendo? You got to work. So during the summer, 
while you're while all your friends are in bed, you're gonna get up and you're gonna go to work with me. That summer, every day, six o'clock in the morning, my granddad was getting up, putting on this shirt and tie. I was getting up, putting on my shirt and tie. But I had to go work with my granddad. And I would work with my granddad from six in the morning, seven in the morning, we start working until twelve. He dropped me off at lunchtime, so I go to lunch with my grandma, and I stay and play with my friends for the rest of the day. But from six to twelve, during that summer, I knew what my time was gonna be. All my friends outside playing. But you know what at the end of the summer I got? That Nintendo. I learned two valuable things. I learned one, if you want stuff, it takes really hard work. And nothing is free. Nothing is free. There's no such thing as a free lunch. All right? Now, I always wanted to make him proud. I wanted to always make my grandma proud. I wanted to make my mom proud. And when I did things that upset that, that, that would, would mess that up for me, that really broke my heart. So here we go. We get to my senior year in high school, year 2000. I'm rocking it out. I'm, I've already made it all the way through school. And like, okay, my senior year, of course, is smooth sailing from here, right? Didn't she just say senioritis earlier? Yeah. Senioritis. Cut senioritis. A couple of things happened that year. One, I got my first car. Got my first car. And uh, I was like, okay, cool. I got a car. I'm a senior. I'm living. So what do I start doing with my car? <laughs> Instead of going to school? <laughs> nope. I made a bad decision. Made some bad decisions. I stopped going to so a couple classes. I would go to school for the classes that I liked and the classes that I didn't like. Just not gonna go. They'll let me graduate. They can't stop me from graduating. Well, just so happens that you need algebra two and biology two to graduate. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. Halfway through that year, my mom kicked me out of her house. At the time, I didn't understand it. I was like, I'm your son. How could you kick me out? I look back now and I say, my mom knew I wasn't living up to my potential. So she had to let me fall. So I could catch myself. So I could learn how far you can go down if you do not work towards your potential. So when she kicked me out, started feeling sorry for myself, went to school even less. Graduation came. Everybody that I went to school with, fifth grade to twelfth grade, graduated and moved on. My best friend, godfather to all my kids, graduated. I didn't even go to his graduation. Because it hurt me so much that I didn't graduate. But I let myself down. I let my grandma down. I let my granddad down. I let my mom down. I let my dad down. It was the worst thing ever. So I asked myself, I'm like, well, what do you do now? What do you do now? Well, I decided to go back to school next year. Same school. Now, if you've been in high school before, you know they have those big pep rallies, right? And then the pep rallies, who's the last people to come in? Seniors. So that first year, I'm senior! Yeah! <laughs> senior. Next year, I'm going to say pep rally for life. Senior. Yeah. Still a senior. People used to make fun of me to call me a super senior. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up, y'all. <laughs> cannot make this stuff up. Super senior. So I you go through the pep rallies. I had a, I had a business teacher, Mr. Jessen. Mr. Jess was my business teacher. I know y'all's high school. He's still there today, which is crazy to me. He says, Rajan, you got two ways you can deal with this. You can laugh about it, or you can cry about it. But whatever you do, you better get better from it. So I decided i make the jump too. Yep, I'm a super senior. I'm going to be the super senior getting straight A's. And I did. Got straight A's all through that year. Graduated, um, went on to the military, had my struggles in the military. But I did six and a half years. I saw some beautiful things. I lived in beautiful countries. It's a country called Qatar. I don't know if you haven't heard of this country. It's one of the most beautiful countries in all the world. Prior to Dubai. Qatar is like an hour, a 30 minute plane flight from Dubai. It's one of the most westernized Middle Eastern countries. I've been to Afghanistan. That was that was cool. I taught hypothermia in Afghanistan. Almost died during the convoy. Really just a story. I'll tell you about one day we'll get a chance to sit down. Um, then I came back and I and, but in Qatar. I got, I got promoted to E5, sergeant, that's NCO, all right? And the first thing I could think to myself was, I'm from North Charleston. I'm from North Charleston, and I'm in, Afga I'm in Afghanistan. I'm from North Charleston, and I'm in Qatar. I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's crazy. Came back, my marriage fell apart. Got divorced. Yeah, I didn't tell y'all I got married. 14 days after I got out of my school. 
14 days after graduating high school. That's not a great time to make decisions for the rest of your life, by the way. Just in case you want to make by doing that, why don't you really give me some serious thought? It's not a great time. But I did. Um, got married 14 days after, after high school. And when I came back from Cutter, my marriage was falling, my marriage was falling apart. I was going through a divorce. That was rough. Another fall down moment. I got, I fell into a real bad depression during that time. Um, I, again, felt like I let myself down. Felt like I let my kids down. By that point, I had two two daughters. Um, and it was like, I, 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 I can't let them down. So I had to find a way to take all those things, put them together and make something of myself. Still in the military, still struggling. So for those who think you go in the army and it's, it's going to change your life around, it'll teach you the principles. But just like any other tool, if you don't use it, it's, it's no good to you. All right? Came out of the military. And I was like, well, actually, I got remarried, came out of the military. Um, and then my wife was pregnant with my twins, um, RJ and Isis. RJ is right there. Isis is at home. She got mad at me because she couldn't come. I'm sorry. Um, but I came home and I started working jobs. Like I started working odd jobs. I sold insurance. Then I was a barber. And then I took the job that would change my life forever. I worked in a call center. <laughs> yes. <laughs> ah, I worked in a call center for AT&T, right there on Meeting Street. I worked there every day for two years. And I hated that job. I had never, like all through school, all through the army, I had never had a job that I flat out hated. I felt like it was soul sucking. I felt like it, 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 it did not meet who I wanted to be as a person. So I came home one day and I told my wife, I'm going to quit my job. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> now she was working at the time, but she's like, what? We we're just getting on our feet and getting to a place, you know, we bought a house. And we, so she's like, what? Again, like, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit my job. She's like, why? Like, I hate what I do. I hate what I do. I'm 28 years old at the time and I hate what I do. So I said, what are you going to do? So I'm going to enroll in college. I'm going to go back to school because if I go to school, I'll, 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 I'll build the skills that I need to be what I want to be in the future. She said, well, what do you want to be in the future? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but I know I don't want to work in a call center. I know that. All right? So she said, what are you going to, what are you going to go to college for? What are you going to major in? I said, I don't know. But I'll figure it out when I get there. So I went to Trident Tech. I put in my, put in my application and I got accepted. I was a small business major, and I told them, no, I'm going over to something, though. Um, I told them um, I'm going to start as a small business major, and I, I took my ELA uh, pretest to be able to uh, try, enroll at Trident Technical College, great institution, by the way. Um, when you enroll at Trident Technical College, or really any um, college, especially right after, um, if you've taken a break from school, you have to take an aptitude test. You have to take an aptitude test so they can see how much you, how much you know. So I took this test. Two tests, the ELA test, where you test like your English language and all that, and you take a mathematics test. ELA, I've been doing ELA my whole life. When I was an army or paralegal, I, I could break down a paper like there's nothing. I could speak in front of people like that's that's nothing. I got a 98 on that. She's like, oh, that's right up there with Barack Obama. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, Barack Obama. You know what I mean? But then I took the math part. I got a 20. Ugh. Is that hard? Not, not that hard. Yeah, you got a 20. So like, all you have to do is take some a couple of remedial courses and they're probably, you're probably right back where you need to be. So, okay, cool. Well, give me the remedial course to sign me up. So I go to the remedial course and I'm in the class. A bunch of people get up in the shot and you'll know that it's not like going to College of Charleston or CSU. There's not be a whole bunch of people 18, 19, 20 years old. We got the old heads up in there. So we'll be 30, 35, 40, you know, mostly at, at Trident Tech, but I love it. I love it. And um, <laughs> not mean like old heads for them. They call me old at work. Don't worry about it. I'm only 36 and they call me old. So I, 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 um, but we were in there and I had a, I always had this spirit. I always had this thing about myself, like there's people around me and I can help them, I'm gonna help. So I'd be in class and people would be struggling with something. I'd like stay after class to work with them on the stuff that, that we just learned. And I had a teacher, Mr. Monterisi. He said, hey, Rajan, you ever thought about teaching? I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't like kids. I like my kids. He's like, I don't know. It's like, I don't know. You might be underselling yourself a little bit. I want you to talk to this guy. I want you to talk to this guy. Like, okay, whatever. So I leave class, and then uh, like two weeks later, he says, hey, did you go talk to that guy I told you to talk about? Talk to? He said, no, sir. 
uh, I'm not interested in teaching. I told you that. I'm good. Thanks. And uh, he's like, no, this is his number. But this is his office. I want you to go over there right now. He's like, I'm going to call and make sure you came today. So I go over to Dr. Tim Brown's office. He's the dean of humanities. He was the dean of humanities at um, China Technical College. And I sat down with him. And when I sat down with him, he um, said, hey, I like you. He's like, I like you. He's like, who's your, who's your advisor? Another thing with China Technical College. No shade at China Technical College. Um, China Technical College is really hard to get in touch with your advisors at China Technical College a lot of times. So you got to be on top of your own stuff. So he said, I'm going to become your advisor starting right now. He became my advisor. He enrolled me in a program called the Call Me Mr. Program. The Call Me Mr. Program at College of Charleston, right? So I was able to um, take the classes that I took at China Tech and transfer the credits over to College of Charleston. So within five years, I graduated with an associate's and a bachelor's degree. Now, if you know the math, you know, it takes two years to get an associate's. It takes four years to get a bachelor's degree. I got both in five. The same amount of time it took me to graduate from what? I, High school. <laughs> I got two degrees, two advanced degrees in the time that it takes to get one. The difference was my mindset. The difference was my mindset. The difference was when I went to school the second time, my mind was on being the best me possible. The first time I went to school, my goal was to get through the next day. When you start thinking 5, 10, 15, 20 years in advance, you'll realize your mindset changes and things start happening. So yeah, I was probably still eating ramen noodles. When I was eating ramen noodles, I was like, okay, I got these ramen noodles and these will get me through to, to tomorrow. But I also wasn't spending extra money eating out. It, it was a mindset change. It was a shift. Where do I want to be in 5, 10, 15, 20 years? And that's what this is about. Career empowerment, career empowerment, empowering you to become your best self in 10, 15, 20 years. So with that being said, I hope that that's what we all leave here with today. And in order to do that, there's certain things we're going to need from you guys. We're going to need your participation. We're going to need you to ask questions. If you don't have something in your hand to write notes down or to ask, but if you have a question where somebody's speaking, which you should be listening well enough where you can ask a question, I'm sure somebody's going to say something that can sow into your life. There's some, somebody, somebody has some information that could bless you later on if you let them. One last thing before I leave. Tools. Tools. If I have a hammer, right, if I want to build a house and I have a hammer and it's sitting in a toolbox, how useful is that hammer to me? It's not. It's like any other tool. Now, let's say I take that tool out take the hammer out and have it in my hand and I use it to hit people in the head with it. Is that a good use for the tool? No. No. Does that make it a bad tool? No. No. It means that the user had the wrong intentions when using the tool. So just like this tool, just like any other tool, I hope you guys use it as something to build that house. And that house is your future. It's your tomorrow. Five, 10, 15 years from now. Thank you.